say that she brought along a, a friend up in New York who's a, who's a former minister mm -hmm. and actually still a minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This and is excellent. That's, as far as introductory books, this that's a very helpful. Is that about the course? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's real introductory. I mean, it, you know, he actually will give stories and then the quote from the course, and he doesn't quite get too deep. I mean, it's, you know, it's real helpful. But it would be a good place to start. It is. Yeah. Yes. And we have we have seventy some tapes available, some of which are at an introductory level, mm -hmm. and some we call beyond the basics, and then some that are going much deeper. Mm -hmm. And with tapes, and you can play them in the car, and you know, you can. Some of them you have to play over and over because these ideas are so fundamental, and yet when the mind is resistant to them, it, it takes repetition. It's like any kind of course that you would take. And most of us have found tapes. Very In the workbook, Jesus makes the statement that everything you believe is rooted in time. So again, when I see a statement like that, I, here I am questioning beliefs and root. You know, root seems to be real, the bottom and basic. If everything that I believe or everything that's part of the ego belief system is rooted in time, then that's what you all, it only comes down to this questioning, this linear view of time and coming to see in some places they talk about time as being simultaneous instead of linear well initially I can be like well <laughs> that sounds interesting, what's, what time, what's simultaneous yeah. yeah, what happened but here's a little description that, that is from Absence from Felicity where Jesus gives this graphic kind of description of time and sometimes if you're kind of visual oriented, it's it's helpful to have a like a graphic, because usually there's not a whole lot of graphics you can think of when you think of time. He says, um, in the course of the sentence, is when correction is completed, time is eternity. But here's the description. Time is like a downward spiral that seems to travel down from a long, unbroken line along another plane but which in no way breaks the line or interferes with its smooth continuousness. Along the spiral, it seems as if the line must have been broken, but at the line, its wholeness is apparent. So you, you can kind of think of a spiral and it's thinking from maybe a, a position inside the spiral of looking and seeing all these like steps, like the spiral staircase of seeing all these separate when you things. Look up or down. When you look up or down. But when, if you're right at the line, if you were like on the line, just flowing on the line, it would seem very smooth and continuous without any sequencing of events. Everything seen from the spiral is misperceived. But as you approach the line, you realize that it was not affected by the drop into another plane at all. But from this plane, the line seems discontinuous, and this is but an error in perception, which can easily be corrected in the mind, although the body's eyes will see no change. So that, that fits back to what we were talking about the other night about it's the correction of misperception would be to quit judging, to let go of all the boxes and just take forgiveness as your only box. The body's eyes would still see a world. But if, you, if there was no judging and categorizing going off, going on in the mind, then it's kind of like the being right there with the Holy Spirit at the line and just watching the events. There wouldn't be any separate events, just watching the images go by. The eyes see many things the mind corrects, and you respond not to the eye's illusions, but to the mind's corrections. You see the line is broken, and as you shift different aspects of the spiral, the line looks different. Yet in your mind is one who knows it is unbroken and forever changeless. That's a, to me, that's been real helpful to think of it in a graphic kind of sense. Come back to the line. Where's the line? Are you talking about the line of the spiral itself? Yeah. Oh. That would be analogous to like the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Or some of you might have, have read um, some of the, when they talk about out-of-body experiences or so on and so forth, you hear in some literature the silver cord, you know, that everyone seems to have a silver cord that goes back. Attached to them. Yeah, to the, to 
and they they feel like they can they can use their mind to go beyond 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 and then but they're always attached to the silver cord it's like the silver cord is their connection to it's like a safety line yeah and there's just a lot of different things i've used the analogy too of just thinking of instead of having all these separate situations and events like you know I wake up in the morning, I go out, I have breakfast, I brush my teeth, I make my bed, I go to work, I go to lunch, you know, there's all these separate situations and events. You can imagine a cord, like for a necklace or a bracelet, that would just connect them all together. That would be like a golden cord that would be in the middle. That would be pretty much analogous, I think, to this line that he's talking about. It's a perspective. It's a way that, that if you were right there on the cord, then you wouldn't be... It feels like a flow mm -hmm. instead of all these things broken up, events. isolated. Like, I start, you know, driving to work by getting in my car and drive for a while, and then I stop driving by getting out of my... You know, it's like there's a beginning and ending to each separate event, and it breaks up. And they're separate events. Time. And when I'm in that place, Everything seems like a struggle. Mm -hmm. That's sure. And, it's your time like, and I can't wait to get to the next thing mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, it's like the next, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, increment of time that I'm And you're you know, constantly readjusting, which causes stress. And the key thing we could look at, too, is like when Ram was saying about that person out there on the screen, that's the person that seems to be part of these sequenced events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you think about even your own personal history, there seems to be all these events mm -hmm. that this person went through, and there all seems to be these events that looks like this person is going to go through, that's coming up. And what the way to transcend that would again be to come above the battleground, so to speak, or to really start to be identified as mine. Instead of being the person on the screen, to be the, the mind that's watching this dream, or the dreamer of the dream, the Course calls it. And that's where the flow, it comes back to mind versus mm -hmm. body senses. Then, in essence, you're, you're, you seem to be on the screen, but it's not your perception, and it's, you know, I mean, people are maybe seeing, in fact, they talk about that in the Course, that you may seem just like everybody else on the screen, but you're focused on your mind, so you're not, that's not your goal. Because you're at peace. You're at peace. So you're flowing on the screen like Rhonda said. It's a flow. There's no separate fragments, no readjustment to every box. No stress. When you're still when you're in time, how, how do you get around the stress? When you're still working with when you're time around people who are working when you're time and you're trying to be a part of that. How does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing about. You know, <laughs> it's, I know. <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing. When we really go into it, every time I've attempted to be peaceful and cons in linear time, in other words, say, well, I'm dealing with people like this and this and this, so I have to, I have to meet them where they're at, or I have to da 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 da. da. You see, you get out on the screen again. Mm -hmm. It really great. has to be questioned, mm -hmm. because it's that whole thing of uh, the old Bible quote about being in the world but not of it. I mean, yeah. How do you do that? Well, in the end, you have to get to such a detachment, be so identified with mind that you don't perceive yourself as in it, mm -hmm. even though it seems, Jesus certainly seemed to be walking around in it, but it was a real detachment like he was... But he wasn't going... You know, well, guys, I have an appointment at 12 o'clock with this other gathering over on Mount Olive. <laughs> so, you know, we have to kind of cut it. He stayed as long as they were willing to listen and then went to the next mount, too. But that's how his life was a flow. And that, that's where that thing that we keep saying of, you know, pulling the mind back, like, you know, that, that cheer that we gave, you know, like pulling the mind mm -hmm. way back. It's like when, I, when I'm getting caught up in what's going out of here, in here, the thing mm -hmm. to remember is, oh, pull it back, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, you know, because when, when I'm caught, when I'm caught up out here, I'm one of the figures of the dream. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm no longer the dreamer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm right in there. In the so dream. then you adjust by trying to fit in and distract yourself from this yeah. with the stuff out on the screen. 
and it's not wanting that distraction anymore. And when that happens, the screen's a distraction, then you pull and you pull back, this is all you want. You don't want to be in linear time. Linear time doesn't work real effectively. It's a trick. What's the trick? Don't well, I think Susan, <laughs> you're asking a good question because when you start to really follow the sin, the world as you know it starts to seem to crumble or not make sense. And many people there was a woman that Mary knew. Yes. There's a woman that Mary knew who, you know, she was asking around and talking about jobs and the woman was was came to you that she said, I just this isn't making sense anymore. And she started going into the course deeper and deeper and she started to listen to some of the, I guess some tapes from mm -hmm. Wisconsin, which is mm -hmm. a real high level of, you know, not trying to reconcile truth and illusion and trying to make it work. And she just said, I'm I'm going to step out because it's not making sense anymore. Mm -hmm. She was stepping out of her job. That's what she, in particular, mm -hmm. what she was referring mm -hmm. to, right? That the, just working this job working doesn't make, isn't make sense, sense to me anymore. anymore. You know, and I have found that. I have just graduated with a master's degree in health education, and I'm trying to figure out, well, what job would fit into this goal of peace of mind? What job isn't going to be a distraction? I'm a nurse. If my goal is taking care of people and giving medicine and all that kind of stuff, then I really must believe in sickness. If I take it away and don't believe in sickness and it's just healing, then can I just work with every patient at their level to help to heal their mind and work with my mind, you know, because it's ultimately my lesson, at the pace that's necessary? Or am I going to be on a doctor's pace, a hospital's pace, a nursing registry's pace? How can I have peace of mind working at a pace the world wants me to work in? Well, you know, that doesn't seem to to work, you know. So I, for me, there's been a, something coming in my meditation for many years now, and it says there is a job out there for you, but you're not prepared for it yet. And I kept that in mind. So I got the degree for some reason because that opened up, but how that's going to look, I have no idea. But there isn't a job that I can go, that I can find in the paper, it's going to give me peace of mind and hold on to this purpose that I desire it's so strongly. And are you getting an inkling of what this other job might be? Oh, I'm getting an inkling. Yeah, yeah, I am. It, it'll never show up in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> no, it won't. It won't. Oh, I'm getting an inkling. Yeah. I think it's good too. Lynette brought the point up quite fine again today. Mm -hmm. And I would say again, you have to start where you perceive mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. You are. You know, this is a direction. I think mm -hmm. we're we're starting to unveil a lot of these years. things yeah. and, and talk about it because we, we as you sit around and talk, I mean, even when Rhonda would, would come and we would go into things and you had a, a job in a formal sense and it was it's, it seems to be a process of the loosening where you just take the next step that's that becomes apparent. You know, you feel it real strong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you even feel a strong idea of what the next step should be, the ego will kick mm -hmm. Right in with all this screeching and but, everything. But, 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 right. but. Yeah. And when you <laughs> hang with it, though, it just this persistent guidance, this call mm -hmm. to, to awaken just doesn't go away. And you hang with it where you are in linear time. You don't bolt out of it because now you came to A Course in Miracles group and it seems like that's what you do. Part of the listening, too, is, is when the mind's in its deceased state, it perceives itself as, as splintered between many levels. You know, like physical, emotional, mental, and so on and so forth, and it seems to have a lot of needs. And you can see if the mind's deceived and it believes it has all these levels and all these needs, that to yank out of a job situation, well, what, what good is that going to do? I still perceive I have needs. Now how am I going to get the income mm -hmm. <laughs> to meet those needs? So mm -hmm. to me that's why it's very important, like Mary said, to question the beliefs. And for me, it's been a process more and more of, of like unifying the needs. It's kind of gotten simpler and simpler to the point where I've seen that healing is my one need, healing of my mind. It, initially, it certainly didn't seem that way. I had student loans to pay off and, you know, very specific things that it's like, well, you can say healing, but <laughs> the government doesn't particularly see it that way. You've signed a note for, you know, to pay back a student loan. So again, it was just listening again, having that desire, and then I would get specific guidance, like, yeah, you've got to get a job, go and pay off the loans. Then it's even the choice of job. 
I wanted to have a place where I would be interacting with with people and I could do 